morning, church. Good morning. Welcome home to Pilgrim United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are a precious child of God. My name is Pastor Rob, and I am the pastor and teacher here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ. And before we begin worship, I have a couple of introductions and an announcement, and the rest of our announcements will follow at the end of the service. First of all, I would like to say that two of my predecessors are here with us, the Reverend Ted Drusen and the Reverend Steve Heckey, which is good, but even more important is the Debs are here, and apparently that is <laughs> what actually matters. So welcome to the Debs. Today we're doing something very special. We are celebrating the 45th anniversary of the making of Pilgrim United Church of Christ when St. Mark's United Church of Christ and Plymouth United Church of Christ came together to do a new thing. And that is the focus of our worship. And as you may have noticed, we have some special guests here as well to provide the music, and that is Paul Thieland and the Holy Family Choir. And many of you may recognize Mr. Clemente providing some songs, so hello, Trevor. <laughs> All of that being said, as we begin this time in worship, I want to make a sad announcement. Uh, church member Judy Getch passed away this past Tuesday. Her family is working on arrangements, but we know that her service and funeral luncheon will be here on Saturday, April 13th. Please hold her family and friends in your prayers and stay tuned for further announcements from her family. Let us now take a moment in silence where we center our hearts and minds to prepare ourselves to enter into a time of worship with each other and our amazing God. <coughs> Please stand as you are able and join us in singing our gathering hymn, also sung as the gathering hymn in the merger service 45 years ago, Forward Through the Ages, hymn number 377.
please join in our call to worship this morning. We're going to do it responsibly, and this side will be the east side, this side will be the west side. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us, and we are God's. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness to all generations. Let us pray. Holy God, we come before you thankful that you love us as we are. We are creatures of your hand. We are a community formed by your spirit. You are the potter, we are the clay. With your sure and loving hands, shape us through the grace of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. In Jesus Christ, God knows and receives us as we are. Listen, give thanks, and live. Let us now share the peace of Christ as a sign of reconciliation with God and each other. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. You are now invited to share the peace of Christ with each other. As you are all seated, the young and the young at heart may come forward for the children's message. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. <laughs> Do you know what this is? Birthday. The birthday bank. That's right, Ted might know what this is all about. <laughs> we here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ encourage people on their birthdays to consider donating 10 cents for every year of life they are celebrating, <laughs> birthday, anniversary, whatever you would like, and we put it in this bank. And then once a year, we do the unimaginable. We give it to the kids in the Sunday school. And they talk about where they're going to use this money as an act of generosity so that we can teach our young children about the spiritual direction, the practice of being generous with all we have. That as being followers of the way of Jesus, we are called to care for others. And we use this as an opportunity to shepherd them in a conversation about children in our city and county who have needs that are great and how they can help them. And in this small way, we hope to teach them to share what they have with others when they are grown. Do we have any donations for the birthday bank this month? Thank you. Either that or I can do it later. Here. I got you. Anyone else? All right, thank you. Oh, I just thought of a birthday. Today is our church birthday, right? Yeah. Yeah. We gotta go to the big stuff. That'll be four dollars and fifty cents, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a lot more than that. Mr. Flaherty just covered us for many more birthdays. <laughs> Thank you all so much. So today, I want to talk to you all about something that's uh, good and sad at the same time. 
Have you ever known of anybody who's died? Yeah. And when you know someone and you love them and they die, you're sad, right? Because they're no longer with us here on earth, are they? And sometimes people, they don't know what to do when they love someone who has died, and they're sad. And here at church, we model healthy ways of remembering the people we love, who we have lost, who are waiting for us with Jesus up in heaven. And one way we do that is to memorialize them, to tell stories about them, to say their names out loud with one another, and laugh and remember. And you're going to see us doing a lot of that here today. And we have a video of just a sliver of the saints of this church who helped us to become the Pilgrim United Church of Christ we are today. And so we're going to watch that video and listen to some beautiful music. And we're going to remember their names and their legacy and the way they taught us the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? So let's watch.
So, the best good news I can give you when you're missing somebody who has died is that as long as you remember them and you tell stories about them and you say their name, they live in your heart forever. <coughs> and that is a gift. Let us pray. Amazing God, we ask that you keep all of our children safe, whether here or scattered abroad, that you surround them with your love and protection, and that you continue to light a fire in our hearts to give them the tools they need so that they may live their very best life, born out of the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now is the time to collect our offering. There are many ways by which you can contribute to the financial health and wellness here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ. You will find those ways soon listed on your screen, in your bulletin, in the Friday e-blast, and in the monthly Quill newsletter. Thank you for your generosity that allows us to continue to proclaim a unique experience with the gospel of Jesus Christ here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ that we truly all believe the city and county of Fond du Lac desperately needs to hear. Let us give as each is able according to the blessings God has given to each of us.
doxology as we receive our offerings. to you. Multiply and use them to bring the word and the touch of Jesus to this place and throughout the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. You may be seated. The reading for today is from the book of Ephesians. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. <clears throat> I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all it, the heavens, so that he might fill all things. He himself granted that some are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of God <coughs> until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of, of doctrine by people's trickery by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Good morning. Let us pray. <laughs> Amazing God, be in our heads and in our thinking, be in our voices and in our speaking, be in our hearts and in our loving. Speak through me or in spite of me for the benefit of your holy word. Amen. Hey, Randy. Yes. How many people do we got in the room today? Uh, I counted, uh, along with a couple of assistants, 104. 104. That's great. And numbers are certainly not a quantitative way to really judge anything in the new economy after COVID. But we are going to look at some numbers today. And there's a reason behind it, I promise. So work with me. <laughs> How many of you people here today were originally members 
of St. Mark's United Church of Christ. If so, could you stand up for us so that we can see you? There we go. One, two, three. Five. Five gathered who were originally members of St. Mark's United Church of Christ. Now, how many people were members of Plymouth United Church of Christ? If you could stand up for us so that we can see you. Two, three, four, four. Thank you. And this will prove my point. How many people have only known Pilgrim United Church of Christ as their church home? Please stand. Please be seated. A lot of people, which is wonderful. So many more people than who stood up for St. Mark's and for Plymouth. And we can see how times have changed. How 45 years ago, likely about half of the people would have stood up and said that they were from St. Mark's on the first Sunday of the merger. And then another half of the people would have stood up and said that they were from Plymouth. United Church of Christ, and no one on that Sunday 45 years ago would have stood up as a member only of Pilgrim United Church of Christ. I wanted to do this little standing exercise to help us to start to think about who we are today. That's my question. What sort of church has God called Pilgrim United Church of Christ to become? And I believe they had similar questions 45 years ago. You had two churches merging into one new church. You had the St. Mark's people and the Plymouth people. And frankly, they didn't know what was going to happen. And they all probably had different ideas about who this new thing, Pilgrim United Church of Christ, was going to be called to be. At the worship service to celebrate their merger, their distinguished speaker, Reverend Donald Hinsey, who was then conference minister of the Northeast Association, chose the text we are using today from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, chapter four, the first 16 verses. I looked at these words attributed to Paul and quickly understood likely why Don chose this text. Preaching to two churches, who were merging as one, he chose Paul talking to another group of people who were building a new church. In this letter, he emphasized our one call from God to, quote, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, one body, one spirit, just as you were called to be the one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. One, one, one. You get the message. And with this idea of becoming one, Paul reminds them that while they are called to become one, we all bring different gifts. Different gifts that will help them to become and remain one with each other, with Christ and with God. But I needed more information before I could answer this question. What sort of church has God called Pilgrim United Church of Christ to become? So, I asked for some help. This morning we're going to do a little thing I call three pastors, one sermon. <laughs> we are fortunate to have two of my predecessors here, Reverend Steve Heckey and Reverend Ted, Ted Drusen, and I have asked them to help me out. And to do that, I invited them to come forward and share their greetings on our anniversary and to share one of their favorite memories with us today. And we're going to begin with Reverend Steve. I think you're getting the three musketeers today. <laughs> <laughs> one for all and all for one quote, and thanks for this great service. I appreciate it so much. It's an honor to be with you, and this thing is in my way. Oh, sorry, Neil. 
let's go over here. Um, just filled with gratitude and thanks to you, Rob, for your invitation. You've been so gracious to me and to Debbie. Uh, we've been with you before in person just to supply preach. And uh, it's just always a great pleasure to be here. And thanks to Pastor Ted and Deb for being here today and for your kind and gracious invitations to have us back through the years that I've been retired. I've been retired 12 years uh, in 2012. And uh, it's always been a blessing to be here uh, because you as a congregation, the five who stood up for Plymouth and the five who stood up for St. Mark's, or so, and all the rest of you really let your light shine uh, for God's love and Christ's presence. And so the one verse of scripture that I like from Matthew, I like many of them, it's the verse that says, let your light so shine in the world that others may see your good works and give glory to God. And I think this church has done that. This is the fourth Sunday in Lent, and we're in the middle of Lent, and uh, it's a Sunday that the church has traditionally taken a break from the Lenten practices. And so it's a Sunday that's called the Joyful Sunday. And what a wonderful Sunday to celebrate the 45th anniversary of Pilgrim Church. So happy anniversary, Pilgrim Church. Rob mentioned Don Hensley being the association minister and he was also here when I started my ministry with you, <clears throat> and we got to know uh, Don and Natalie very well. And one time, Don shared with me an insight that he had about the merger. And I don't know, Ted, if you heard any of this, uh, but he came up and he said, you know, Steve, uh, when I helped with Norman to get those two churches together, they were both dying. I thought, whoa. And he said, I really, I know, <laughs> I've seen some people looking like, what? And, and Debbie and I weren't aware of this when we took the pastorate. <laughs> and so uh, we walked into this happy to be here and glad to be here in Fond du Lac. It was such a, a uh, well, anyways, I've said that already. So uh, I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, I really didn't know if they would make it. And he said, uh, I, I didn't think they really had a chance. They were so diverse, so different from each other. And there's a whole story about St. Mark's and Plymouth Church being that different group. But as we listened and saw some of the saints this morning and remembered them, they were the ones who took the initiative and had the grit and the determination to put these two together. Debbie and I were just along for the ride. Uh, we, we, we were just enjoying that whole process. And you were always willing to be open to newness. And so the Christian fellowship of this church started out with those two and grew to a point where it was nurturing all of us in the Christian faith, in the sense of community, the passing of the peace, all of those things that bring us together. And it was a wonderful experience. And I, along the way, said I, I'm a lifelong learner. The more I learn, the less I know. <laughs> and, and that was true of everything that happened here, but you, you joined with me in that process of learning. And so adult education was important to me, as well as youth education and the younger kids. And we had a wonderful Sunday school and, and a wonderful group of folks who made that happen. Uh, but along the way, I would say, uh, I wish we could have more adult education. We had a weekly adult Bible study, and uh, that was good, it was, it was attended well. And we had a few minor things that happened. And then Peg Bradley showed up in the church with Ridge. And uh, people who moved here from uh, down in Chicago, you know, moved him to Fond du Lac. And uh, Peg came up one day and she said, Steve, you talk a lot about adult ed. And I said, yes, that's what I really hope we could get going. She said, I want to help you make it happen. And without Peg's assistance, and I really call her out on this, I don't see her here today. Peg, are you here? No. Okay, she's not. Well, anyways, <clears throat> she made it happen. And, through, and, it, and it just comes together 
and this is my point, the more we learn as adults, the more the children and the youth follow us in that learning process, and the more they learn, and the church grows and is strengthened through that. So a couple of adult things that happen, uh, and they're not just educational, they're also activities, but favor was the f friends aware of violent relationships in Fond du Lac, some of you might remember that. And it's now changed names, morphed into something even better. But a lot of adult members of this church were instrumental in making favor a reality. Uh, Loaves and Fishes had its start down at the YMCA. And we would make the food here, and I think Barb was in on this, and Catherine Crail, and a few <coughs> other folks that we saw this morning. And we would get all these roasters and haul them down to the Y as people were coming out of the swimming pool and, and coming down the hall with their workout clothes. And uh, we would have those kinds of outreach things. New Year's Eve progressive dinners. Some of you might remember that. It's a story we're sharing where we'd have four course dinner and each of those courses would be in a different member's home and we would end up at the final home as the dessert course in somebody's home wishing each other Happy New Year, stuffed to the gills with good food. Uh, and Peg did something that was just unique. Uh, she helped us get off campus and do adult retreats away from this building. And it would be attended by sometimes 40 to 50 people, couples and, and singles from the church. And she had a contact through her connection with the churches in Chicago, North Chicago, with a Ron Miller. And Ron Miller was a Jesuit priest who was a wonderful teacher. And Ron would lead some of those uh, gatherings. And so we weren't afraid to do new things. Uh, we weren't afraid to learn. We weren't afraid to keep in that process of coming forward into faith. And there were so many strong women in the church um, I had three daughters, one of them was born here in Fond du Lac, and uh, those three girls were watching the strong women of this church and absorbing the kind of Christian lifestyle that you mentored them in. And so this group of kids here this morning is watching us. They're absorbing us. They're looking at how we live in the world. And so that was a wonderful thing to watch, and I'm so proud of my three kids as they've become strong Christian women also. So you get the picture. Uh, and you had a strong pastor and Pastor Ted to lead after I left. You have a strong pastor now. Uh, youth ministry was just, just growing all the time. And uh, we took youth mission trips. Uh, I know Ted's continued that, and Rob has also done it. Back Bay Mission, Christian Outreach for Appalachian People in Harlan, Kentucky. You all made these things possible. Um, Tracy was involved in those mission trips as well. So one memorable mission trip, and here it's taken me a long time to get to my story and I'm out of time. But, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> This is the mission trip I want to remember. I want you, I want you to remember. <clears throat> the first mission trip the youth took decided to go to Denver, Colorado for a week. And the, 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 the organization that was uh, fostering this and, and partnering with this was the United Methodist Church Urban Ministries in Denver, Colorado. So we drove out to Denver got situated in their regional office building. We slept on the upstairs uh, floor of the building. There was one bath with a shower downstairs. And each day they had outlined for us a different mission project to do in Denver. By the time we got to Thursday night, we were sent to uh, a soup kitchen that was operating each and every night of the week. And we went there and we ended up serving 700 meals to homeless people in Denver, Colorado. Uh, it was a lot of work. And the kids were just worn out. I know the adult sponsors were too. But one of the highlights of that whole thing, along with the friendliness of the homeless people to us and their gratitude for providing food, 
was that there was a man who played the piano and he quickly as he offered his different selections of music, we realized he was a classical pianist. And he was playing this beautiful music for this crowd of 700, not just for a half an hour. He played the entire time. And the kids caught on to this. They were listening to this. And we all thought, who is this guy? And it turned out that when we had finished our chores and we were all done with serving the meal and heading back by foot, walking back to the, the regional center where we stayed, he joined us for the walk because he was walking to wherever home was. And the kids were thrilled with this. They had all kinds of questions. They wanted to know who he was, where did he go to school, where did he learn how to <coughs> play the piano like that. And it turned out that he grew up in a good home. They had a baby grand piano in that home. He learned to play because his mom fostered him into playing good music. And, and, and I use that term lightly. I mean, good music is up to the listener, right? <laughs> so anyways, it was great though. He learned how to play. And then he made some bad decisions in his life. And it led him to the street. And it led him without having any way to make a life. And so as a part of his 12-step uh, program, he wanted to pay back and make amends. And a part of a making amends process for him was playing that music every night at that soup kitchen. And he would go to the local public library and find music, make copies, and come back. So we walked with him. The kids did most of the talking. We had a few questions. And it was just a wonderful exchange of conversation. And finally, we got to where we needed to say goodbye. And he went off into the night. We went back to where we were living. And uh, after we settled in, uh, Kathy Borowski went downstairs to use the bathroom. And uh, we thought all the doors were locked. And so uh, she comes out of the bathroom, and there's these two strange men uh, coming into the building. And they said cheerily, hello. And she said, well, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and she walked upstairs. She got upstairs and shared what had happened. And as we talked about this, it dawned on us, those two guys didn't belong in that building. So we called the Denver police. And we waited. And we waited. And we waited. <coughs> and finally, the joke among us was, car 54, where are you? <laughs> they never showed up. <laughs> so a couple of the guys and I, got together and we went downstairs. The men weren't there. They had helped themselves to a few computers and they had walked out of the building. So we locked the doors. So thank you, Pilgrim Church, for what you've given back to Debbie and I and to our family. Uh, it continues to be a blessing for us. Thank you, Ted and Deb, for your kindness to us as well and to this congregation. And thank you, Pastor Rob, for being such a strong pastor and teacher and becoming a friend. And I appreciate it so much. And may God bless you and Nick richly as you work together here. Oh, and one more thing, Pastor Rob. Um, here's a confirmation medallion. And I don't know if you have one. I don't think you do. And there's a bunch of them on the wall back there, the confirmation class. There's an <coughs> You'll talk to me after lunch about this. <laughs> Thank you so much. One down, two to go. Reverend Ted, please. slightly different microphone <laughs> desires. So hopefully, uh, true to form, uh, we all will be. I'm, let's see. 
That's all I got. So, <laughs> it shouldn't take too long. Well, Pastor Rob, thank you so much for inviting us back. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ted Drusen, and I was pastor here at Pilgrim from September 1st, 2001. You can think of my second Sunday here, what happened on September 11th, 2001. Um, I just was reminded, um, Tyler Wall, who plays for the Badgers, just turned 23, was born in 2001. So <laughs> it happened a long time ago. Uh, and then my last Sunday here was May 31st, uh, 2020 and there were six of us in the sanctuary and everybody was so gracious said goodbye out in the front drove by in their car we waved we bowed um, we did all, what we could and I think it was a uh, uh, interesting uh, time as far as we all tried to share the love that we had uh, for one another in the way that was appropriate at the time. So beginning with September 11th, ending with the pandemic. Uh, nice little uh, bookends on a uh, ministry. So Pastor Rob had suggested Ephesians 3, um, uh, 17. I'm just going to back up a little bit on that passage because uh, I want to go back to Ephesians 3, 17 which says, and that Christ, this is a prayer that Paul has, so it's kind of the middle of prayer, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded <clears throat> in love. I think this rooted and grounded in love is my experience here at Pilgrim, along with the accomplishing more than we could have asked or imagined. I could talk about my time here at Pilgrim, but that would be incomplete because it was our time, Deb's and my time here at Pilgrim and our ministry together. But not really. Not really because it's much more a ministry of pilgrim that Deb and I had the opportunity to, to we just happened to be here at that moment and at that time. So, um, you know, here are just a couple of quick thoughts uh, that I had. I don't have one fantastic story, though seeing all the pictures up on the screen made me think of about 10 different stories. Um, so anyway, a couple quick thoughts. Something I did talk about while I was here and I continue to think is important is I have always been impressed with the number of, uh, of adults at Pilgrim. And when I mean adults, it has nothing to do with age. Uh, an adult is someone with whom you can agree with and disagree with and talk about the issue. And the issue is where the conversation goes. And then afterward, go out and have coffee. And there's a level of respect that happens between us. And it doesn't mean we agree. But it means we sit and listen and talk and have that respect for one another. And there are not many adults in this world, but Pilgrim has a lot of adults. And that's one way we show that we are rooted and grounded in love. The important conversations at Pilgrim happen in the meeting, not in the parking lot. Right? That is being rooted and grounded in love. It's part of my experience, our experience here at Pilgrim. I can't not, I can't help but to remind us about Cal Maley. Cal. He started on June. 1964 
And his ministry was over. He retired in July of 2018 and died, I think, in October of 2018. I I remember when Marie said, I wonder how long he's going to last after he retired. I had no idea that it was so such an important thing. And you remember, Cal, if we were getting close to the Packer game, boy, we could fire through <laughs> on him. <laughs> I also remember, Cal, cruising down the road with this pipe on his bike, no helmet. <laughs> 54 years of musical excellence with Cal. Mm -hmm. Pilgrim is known as, was known as the Ham Dinner Church. That would be a St. Mark's thing, right folks? The Ham Dinner Church. And remember the piglets. And how many piglets are there that we had? And when we were here, I remember the crush of people. How many, not quite this many people be sitting here waiting for dinner, but pretty close. And there would be oodles of people wall to wall, and I would get the job of greeting. I felt like I was running for office. (laughs) But there were so many people from the whole community here. It was wonderful. And Randy with the pink hat. I hope he's still got the pink hat, Randy. Oh, yes. Oh, good. (laughs) Thanks to Ron (laughs) McGreedy. We were known and are known as for our adult education, and we're back to Peg Bradley, and the gift that she has of helping us learn, and I would say unlearn some things. Uh, And the other folks that help lead that ministry between Midge Miles and Dickie and Suzette, Curtis. You know, it takes a champion to make anything happen. And if anything's gonna happen, you know, that's far more than we could ask or imagine. If anything's going to happen that's rooted and grounded in love, it takes a champion to make those things happen. And we had a champion for the metal roof that's above here. Because they wanted to make sure that their grandchildren didn't have to replace that. We had a champion for the solar panels that are on the church here. We had a champion for the family fun nights that happened. We have a champion for the script program. We had a champion for those who helped us connect with Rosno and the folks that read and worked at Rosno. We had a champion, Mandy, who were incredibly patient to help Pilgrim become an open and affirming congregation. We had a champion for those who figured out how to live stream the service in five days. <laughs> We've been talking about doing some kind of a, a alternative tape ministry for the shut-ins. And then I remember we all of a sudden were shutting down. And so we're going to live stream. How? I don't know. <laughs> we had to figure it out by Sunday. And we did. And if you had a child in confirmation during the time that I was pastor, You may remember the most wonderful movie of them all. (laughs) Wide Awake. The good news, if you went through confirmation with me, you didn't see it once. You didn't see it twice. You probably saw it three times and would remember the name Joshua A. Beale, who is the protagonist of that movie. Pilgrim has been, in my experience, A group that is indeed rooted and grounded in love. As love is our ground, it is the dynamic reciprocity of love that keeps going away, that makes love our destiny, love our fulfillment. And in my experience of this community, bringing that message of love to all people, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. And together, as community, we've been able to accomplish that process. And are with 
Pastor Rob launching into a new chapter of this wonderful community's ministry. Amen. Thank you both. That helps me to try to figure this thing out, right? Who have we become? Who have we called to become by God as Pilgrim Church? And I haven't been here that long, certainly not the 40 years represented by my predecessors. But I do have one memory, and it's from last November. It was my second ham dinner, which we all know is a really big deal around here. It's a all hands on deck experience. I stopped counting at over 80 different volunteers to make the magic happen. And I've since learned that this next year is going to be our 55th anniversary of the ham dinner. And so that means it was a tradition at St. Mark's before it became part of Pilgrim's story. And it's a good fundraiser, so I can see why they would keep it going. But last year's ham dinner was a little different. Because you see, Randy and Linda Stutz are the driving force behind the ham dinner for the moment. And they are the organizers. They chair the small group. They make the magic happen with all the volunteers. And as many of you here know, last year, Linda had cancer. And she was receiving treatment. I've spoke to her about this. I can share the story. Uh, she couldn't do it all. Not like she used to. And she needed to slow down and rest, and she didn't like it, and she had to <laughs> depend upon others to help her and Randy because no one person could do something like this on her own. She could not physically withhold the rigors of the crucial 12 to 14 hour day, the day of the event either, and to deal with this, several key things happened. Uh, first, Mary Christensen came back to help lead. Mary was the big cheese, uh, still is, the head honcho, <laughs> the uh, numero uno of all things ham dinner related, even with Linda. If Linda doesn't know, and that doesn't happen often, the default is Mary Christensen. And she had stepped aside and passed that responsibility on to Linda and Randy. But she came back for a year to help. And then Jim Bentley agreed to lead with Mary, and he had never done this before. He's a newer member to the church compared to m many others, but it wasn't just Jim, because if you know Jim, then you know Diane, and you know that they come as a package deal. <laughs> so the day of the, of the actual dinner, and if I forget someone, I apologize, but the general leadership team was Randy and Mary and Jim and Diane and Bobby Flaherty, among others. And Linda did her part, and she went home and rested when she was supposed to. Though she would send me text messages throughout the day telling me to tell Mary to text her if Mary wasn't looking at her cell phone. And Mary wasn't looking at her cell phone because Mary was working. We sent Linda pics of the event to make her feel included, and she wanted to see what the ham bones looked like. And if you know, you know. That's critical information. And Mary, Jim, and Diane, and Randy, and Bobby, and Rachel, and Rachel, and Avery, and so many others, I can't name them all. They got it all done. One step at a time, one ham dinner at a time. And we sold just over 800 ham dinners this year, and we even gave 10% of those dinners to people who could not afford to buy a meal for themselves. So this year we also fed hungry families, and it was a beautiful thing. And as I love to say, that's not all. There is just a little bit more to the story. Not only did the previous generation step in when needed to work with the current generation in leadership, there were others. We had new members who learned the secret of the legendary scalped potatoes. <laughs> they are a younger family, the Wickahowskis, a new generation at Pilgrim, to whom all the great mysteries of the Nesco were revealed. And the nibblings were plentiful this year. That's how we know if the next year is going to be good, if there's a lot of nibblings. Another generation, our youth, showed up to help run the meals from the kitchen to the distribution area at the drive through And if you are counting, that's four generations of pilgrims coming together, all with different gifts for one purpose, inspired by one call. 
though I doubt Paul was thinking about a ham dinner at the time, but you get the point. But wait, because there is one more generation to count. And I had heard so many stories while working with people this year, bagging rolls with pats of butter or stacking desserts on the tables in the narthex or waiting for those late pickups during those last 90 minutes of distribution time. They talked about the fifth generation, many of the people we saw in that video earlier, those who had done the ham dinner before us, who have now gone on to their heavenly reward. And by saying their names and sharing their stories, I firmly believe that they were here with us too. That's five generations of pilgrims present and accounted for in one way or the other, working together, as Paul said, one call from God, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, one body, one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and parent of all. So what kind of church has God called us to become? I think I can safely say, in listening to my two distinguished predecessors, and thinking about my story in this scripture, we are the kind of church that comes together to get the job done. We care for each other. We share the responsibilities of the gospel of Jesus Christ seriously, but with a lot of laughter and so many wonderful memories of the saints who have gone before us. I am fond of saying that we have a big tent theology here at Pilgrim that took 45 years to build. We gather people who share a wide array of beliefs and create brave spaces where they can come together to worship God and serve our neighbors that may be very different than the people who gathered in this space 45 years ago, and yet we are still one. We grow in our faith together, not despite our differences, but because we celebrate them. I think that is the very best of us. God's love and grace are unconditional and freely offered to all people without restriction. So take these memories and these stories and the sacred names of those who have gone before and remember today that we are all different with different gifts and ways of being in the world and yet we are all one. And with an incredible amount of thanks to my predecessors, Reverend Steve and Reverend Ted, for helping us to find the answer to this very critical question. Amen. For Lent, we are now singing the Psalter every week in Lent, and members of our choir will come forward. The Psalter was a way when many in the pews thousands of years ago were illiterate to teach them about Scripture and the Word of God and who God is and how God matters in their lives. We will have a call and response. I am the one, you are the all, and you are invited to join members of our choir every five or six verses in singing the response musically consider the steadfast love of God inspired by the 107th Psalm. I'll give thanks to God for God is good. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of God say so, those whom God redeemed from trouble, and gather in from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to God in their trouble, and God delivered them from their distress. God led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank God for God's steadfast love, for God's wonderful works to humankind, for God satisfies the thirsty, and the hungry God fills with good things.
God turns rivers into a desert and springs of water into thirsty ground. God turns a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. God turns a desert into pools of water, parched land into springs of water. And there God lets the hungry live, and they establish a town to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards, and they get a fruitful yield. Let those who are wise give heed to these things and consider the steadfast love of God. As I am fond to proclaim each week, the power of God is real and the power of prayer is real. Hallelujah. And yet we do not pretend to understand nor certainly to ever control God's power. And yet, when some of us take the time to stop and reflect on what God has done for us that we cannot do for ourselves, we come to the inevitable conclusion that the power of God is real and the power of prayer is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us center our hearts and minds as we come together to pray with each other and our amazing God. Merciful God and Father of us all, we come together today and give thanks and praise for the 45th anniversary of our coming together to be Pilgrim United Church of Christ. We give thanks for all those who, who in days and years past have contributed to the ongoing life of every congregation who has come before us and from which we are now one United Church in Christ, who sought to be led by new insights and truth to do your will. Keep us, as you have kept others, courageous and strong, free from stiffening into unchangeable patterns of thinking and living. Open us always to the fresh, uncomfortable winds of your Holy Spirit, for there is no one among us who can make this pilgrimage without your help and your loving compassion. We look to you for guidance and leadership as we live into the future as one church. Today we lift up all of the prayers in this room and online, both spoken and unspoken, and we include the family and friends who are grieving the death of our church member, Judy Getch, Nathaniel Parker, Lynn Opitz, Bruce Stanke, Kathy Drew, Chuck Zwerg, Tom, Dan Hughes, Brad Dietenberg, <coughs> Jean Wichikowski, Bob Wichikowski, Michael Lalik, Rosie Stumpf, Lois Ring, Stephanie, Joni Voss Habor, Vicki Lamb, Barb Taddick, Judy Fobble, Sandy Baker, Karen Brzezinski, Rebecca Killowy, Tim Flaherty, Brian and Jessica Jacobson. And Lord, we give thanks and praise for the service of Walter Hawkins. Yeah. Now we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may rise as you are able and join us in singing our sending hymn, We Love Your Realm, O God. We
p.m. is the fourth of our five-week series on a Lent and worship service, which will be held here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ, 7 p.m. The Reverend Ruth Hansen from Salem United Church of Christ in Wayne will be preaching. This Friday, March 15th at 6 p.m., we will have a family fun night. We will be watching the movie Elemental. Saturday, March 16th, will be the Diners Club at 5 p.m. We will be meeting at El Port Horton. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex. Today, about 15 minutes after this service ends, the Executive Director of the Wisconsin Council of Churches, Terry Parker, is going to be talking about theology in the public square for our adult forum in the lounge. At the same time, we will be serving coffee and cake here in the sanctuary. Do we have someone who needs to come up to the lectern? Let turn and make an announcement. Hi. <laughs> we are selling candy bars to raise money for our mission trip to Knoxville, Tennessee this summer. I'm one of the adults going, and I have a youth with me. Um, the candy bars are going to be 150 and thank you for supporting us. <laughs> and with that, think about all that has gotten us to where we are here today. Before churches were merging, we were merging. That's pretty cool. And out of something that was dying, we heard, was born new life. And it wasn't because of Steve or Ted or me. It was because of all of you. To believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ enough to dedicate your lives to building a church that makes a difference in the world. And for that, I say thank you. And God bless you. And keep doing it, guys. One good church. Go and love the peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.